the players on stage and 4,000 gave him a rapturous round of applause as the picture of Jockey appeared on the giant screens. The great Jockey Wilson who died this week. Joining me now, Phil Taylor and Rod Harrington. Phil, it was, it was a special moment earlier on, wasn't it? The, the, the minute applause lasted two and a half minutes. It did, and it deserves five minutes, Jockey does. Love him, always will. Um, and I was, I was dead pleased tonight. Malvina, his wife, she'll be absolutely heartbroken, of course she will. But she'll look at this tonight and she'll be over the moon. And he so all his sons as well, John and the other lad. Do you, do you remember the first time you met Jockey and, and, and what um, you thought at the time? The, I, I've had so many memories about Jockey. Can you remember the first time when I first met him? It was probably in the county when I first played county. And he was such a big, massive figure. Along with Eric Bristow, John Lowe, Cliff Lazarenko, you know, Alan Evans and Leighton Reese, they were big icons for us. Yeah, and I, and I can remember, because he always had this massive smile. What seemed a to go toothy from, smile, a gummy yeah, smile. Yeah, yeah, but his smile went from ear to ear. Yeah. You know, and he was always there, he was always there to give you a little bit of advice, even though he's playing against it, he'd still help you out. Was he an intimidating presence when you first started playing Only intimidating, it? it was never intimidating way to try and take it out. It's not like Eric Bristow or Alan Evans, it was more of an intimidation because you never knew what he was going to do. Jockey was a, a 140, 180, 26, 45, 180 out. And that was Jockey. So you never knew. A bit like this fella, actually. He was a bit like that. But he was. He was. He was. Uh, uh, he just didn't never knew what he was going to do. He played in the great era of darts as well, didn't he? he? Did. The likes of Lowe and Bristow pushing him all the way. I, I am more thankful to people like Jockey Wilson, Eric. John Lowe, Cliff Lazarenko, you name them, Alan Evans, you, all of them. Because without them, I wouldn't be standing here with this fella, with yourself now. They were the ones what started this, they were the pioneers of the game. Roddy was a larger than life character on and off the hockey. Yeah. You got any special memories? Well, there's one, Dave. I mean, it's a bit drink related, but there was him and Peter Everson in a place called Lotham. We were playing a tournament, which was about an hour and a half outside Vegas. And they got up early one morning to go down and prepare and they were drinking Long Island iced teas but they didn't realise that a Long Island iced tea has five shots in it. <laughs> well, the time I got down there and said, come on, one of them went to get off the stool and fell on the floor, the other one tried to help him out and there's Peter Everson and Jockey on the floor <laughs> and me and Bob Anderson were just crying with laughter. But that, that was Jockey, I mean, he was just such a character. We've got some Jockey, good... Jockey said he was teetotal. <laughs> <laughs> now I understand what he means. We've got some footage of you and the, and the world pairs in air. Oh, you alongside what? Jockey. Does this bring back a lot of memories for you? I can, yes. I, oh, yeah. I can remember playing him in Everson, actually, when Jockey went out in a 170. The fella was... Oh, look at me. Look at him. Go on, fella. What's it like seeing this again? It's great, because I loved him, and he was one of them characters again who loved winning, loved being a part, loved life. He will go down as, as one of the greats, been a two-time world champion and an epic finals as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I think what I remember of Jockey more than anything, some of his battles against Eric. I mean, off the hockey, they were, they were pretty good friends, but on the hockey, they were absolute enemies. I mean, when they played in Scotland, you know, I remember Eric saying that Jockey kicked him in the shins before he walked on the stage, <laughs> and Eric had blood coming from his shins. But he, he's, he was such a brilliant dart player that, you know, you remember him for that. Do you know what I'm surprised about? Half of these people in the crowd here have never seen Jockey Wilson play, and they all know who he is. He's a Robbie Williams, he's a Frank Sinatra, he's a, an Engelbert Humperdinck, you know what I mean? They all know who he is, even though half of them never even watched him, you know, watched him play. I tell you what, he had some nice words to say about you after that tournament today. Today, this man, Phil, he's encouraged me all morning, all afternoon, I've been with, with him all day, and then I came into the venue tonight, then, guess who else gave me great support? Eric Bristol. And I'm really, really proud. I know Eric a lot longer than I've known Phil, but Eric, if you're listening, thanks very much, mate. But see this lad, Jeff, <laughs> he is the world's number one, and I'll tell you. Isn't that right, my duck? Saying you're the number one oh, at the time. And... I've got a bit of a tear in my eye now. Oh, he was right, though, wasn't he? <laughs>
you played him on a, on a few occasions as well, Rod. We saw some footage of you earlier on. What was it like to, to face the man, the, the legend, and that, that bizarre throwing action? I think that was it more than anything, Dave. You stand behind Jockey and, he, he, you know, he's lurching and he's thrusting his dart. And then you put your head to the side of his head to see what to see the dartboard. And you can see the darts in the treble. You see it in the double and you're thinking, I can't believe he keeps doing it. But he did and he kept doing it. And I think that was more the intimidating thing of Jockey when I played him. Who was that? <laughs> Who this was, was 1995, Phil, the world match play. It's oh, in colour just mate. about. <laughs> But there, there you go, you've just, seen, you've just seen one of the biggest snatches ever, and he's going to hit 140. And now look at that, miles away. That just shows you. Oh, no. Rod, I'm still doing it. Rod, what do you remember from that night? Because he gave you a pasting, didn't he? He did give me a pasting, yeah. I mean, I think that year I was pretty well on form, doing well. And I just walked into Jockey that night, and he just battered me. And sometimes, in them days, in, in my game, if I got battered, I'd just hands up Cadbury's and move on to the next one. Will we ever see that sort of player come through again? Are you ever going to see a coach like, like Jockey with no teeth? Never, never in a million years are you ever going to be. And now you're looking at your friend there, what's died, and I've been his friend for 25 years. Eric Bristow, probably 35 years. But we still smile because we celebrate Jockey's life. Me personally, he's only won, he's only won two world championships. I think he could have won more, personally. Uh, John Lowe might disagree with you, Eric Bristol might disagree because they say, no, I should have won more, whatever. And it was a great battle in them days, you know, it still is, still the same, but you haven't got the character anymore. It's very, very serious now. I mean, the money in the game is massive, everything else is massive, but Jockey never really played darts for money. He enjoyed it. What will your abiding memory be of, of Jockey Wilson, Rod? Do you know what, Dave? I, I see him in here. In the early days when I started playing, I went to see him in an exhibition. He did a 19 dart thousand and one. Wow. I've never seen that before, and, and this guy on the top of his form is going to have a job to do it. That was incredible. I think that and just his raw talent that doesn't come along in any sport very often. You know, and, and Phil said he should have won more world championships. Sometimes them guys don't win them because of that raw talent. They don't know how to, to bottle it like Phil knows how to bottle his talent. And I think that then people make the game more exciting than other players, and that's what makes the whole game. And Phil, the, the reception he got tonight is measure of the man and, and what a legend he was. He was a fantastic, but you know one legend who stood by his side, who thick and thin, and I mean this most sincerely because I was a big friend of Jockey's, his wife Malvina. She, I remember saying to Malvina, they left, they had a big massive bungalow, and, and uh, in the northeast, it was it was it was a dream house really, and everything went a little bit wrong for him, you know, jockey at, at bad times. And Malvina went back to Scotland, and I said, "You bothered?" And she went, "Phil, I would live in a caravan for that fella." Lovely, Jockey Wilson, who died this week. Lovely words from Phil Taylor.